Hi everyone, my name is Mike Cohen and uh, I'm here to introduce you today to a new DFIR tool called Velociraptor. You might have heard of Velociraptor, it's been around for a few years now um, and recently it's become very popular among uh, DFIR practitioners because it really provides us with um, some very unique capabilities uh, and scalability. It allows us to query many, num many endpoints for uh, forensic artifacts and, uh, and build custom detections very flexibly. And the thing that makes it really special is that Velociraptor implements its uh, power and flexibility through something called the Velociraptor query language, which is a query language that is built into Velociraptor and that allows users like you and I to create new detections uh, using this query language and look for new threats. And in fact, VQL is so pervasive in Velociraptor that it's used to collect information from endpoints, as well as create monitoring and response queries on the endpoints. So you can actually have the endpoint monitor for uh, emerging threats by itself, autonomously. VQL is also used to control and manage Velociraptor server. So VQL is actually used everywhere in Velociraptor to automate everything. So we don't have a lot of time today, but I just wanted to give you a quick overview of how Velociraptor actually works. Typically, we install the Velociraptor server in the cloud and uh, our endpoints uh, which we call in Velociraptor terminology, the clients, are uh, constantly connected to the server through persistent communications. And that allows us to task clients very quickly in very low latency. So as soon as we want to search for something, the clients immediately uh, return that, that information. Um, <clears throat> we also have an admin UI, which uh, is used to control and manipulate the server, which we'll see that today. Now, Velociraptor is really efficient, really scalable. Typically, we, can, we have no problems um, running up maybe to 15 or 20,000 endpoints within the same server. So it's actually quite efficient to be able to manage that many endpoints uh, using just a single, single um, cloud server. And the reason that it's fast is because Velociraptor uses VQL to simply issue queries to the endpoint. So the endpoints are really doing a lot of the heavy, most of the heavy lifting, but that's simply sending us back those results. And the server simply writes those results to, to, uh, to storage. And so it doesn't really need to do a lot. And that's why it becomes very scalable. So you'll see that today. So I could talk with you for hours to explain all the, all the different features in Velociraptor, but we don't have that much time today. So uh, I just wanted to show you a quick practical hands-on example of how you can use Velociraptor in, in order to, to perform an, a typical uh, DFIR task. Now, those of you who have been uh, you know, reading the news, the security InfoSec news in the last couple of weeks, in fact, um, you would have heard of this uh, critical vulnerability or critical advisory that was uh, published uh, on May 4th and uh, which, in which hundreds of millions of Dell computers are at risk due to uh, driver privilege escalation flows. So what's happening here is that there is a very old driver that was released by Dell and it's basically used on every single Dell system uh, you know, out there. And uh, it turns out that this driver has multiple very critical vulnerabilities. And as you know, when a driver is vulnerable, it, be, it becomes a gateway into the kernel. So attackers can exploit that vulnerability to in fact insert code into the kernel and uh, take over ring zero and escalate their privileges. So it's a pretty serious vulnerability. If we go over to the Dell website, which explains the vulnerability in uh, more details and provides some advice, uh, we can see that, you know, it's a very serious vulnerability. 
Uh, and we might, we might be wondering, okay, how shall we remediate this? How, how does Dell recommend that we fix it? So we simply scroll down the page and we find this recommendation. Uh, we simply have to check the following locations for the dbutil sys drive, driver file. Uh, C uses, oops, uh, C uses app data temp. <clears throat> okay, so that would be reasonable if I had one or two or even a dozen machines, I could probably manually go and check them. But most, you know, large organizations, you know, might have 20,000, 10,000 machines, and you can't really manually go and check these locations by hand. So this is the problem. Uh, it's a problem of scale. This is where Velociraptor really shines. Because Vel Velociraptor has this concept of hunting. And hunting in Velociraptor is the idea that you can collect a forensic, uh, a particular evidence, particular artifact, we call them forensic artifacts, from many endpoints at the same time. This is called a hunt. So in Velociraptor, we call a hunt simply a logical container for many individual collections that Velociraptor manages on our behalf. So we do a hunt and we collect that file from all of these, from the, the same location across all the machines at the same time. So it's called a hunt. So in this case, um, if we follow the um, if we follow the advice here, we simply need to find that file in those those uh, locations. So let me just uh, show you uh, this Velociraptor deployment that I have here, and uh, as you can see, it has approximately two thousand endpoints currently connected. So, um, so now all I have to do, and, and you know, I can see the different endpoints and interact with them individually. But in this case, I just want to go to the hunt manager to create a new hunt. So let's start a new hunt. So the first thing I have to do is create a description for the hunt, and I'm going to do a search for db db util file. Okay, and then I have to select the artifacts that I want to collect. Now, because I'm going to search for files, I'm going to select an artifact called the file finder. And the file finder is a particular artifact that allows me to search for files. Now, over here, you can see a bit of a description of what it does. And then you can see all the parameters that I can control the, I can use to control the artifact. Down here, you know, I can, you can see the VQL but you don't really have to do anything with it because um, it's already there. So let's, let's configure the parameters. So these are the different parameters that I can use. And you can see here, I can put some wildcards that allow me to search for these files. Now let's go back to our advisory. Then we can, uh, we can find out that this is the, the path where we expect those files to be. It's in the user directory. All the, any of the users app data local temp db utils. So all I have to do is simply search for the file over there. And while I'm at it, I might as well just calculate the hash if I find it. And, uh, and then I'll just launch the hunt. Now when I launch a hunt, it starts off in the post state and I have to actively go and start it. And you see that as soon as I start it, that hunt will start getting scheduled across the entire fleet and you can see all the clients are getting scheduled and then they'll uh, complete that hunt as soon as they can. This is a very quick hunt. So they only just need to check one file. Now, as this hunt is progressing, uh, you see we're almost, almost done. Uh, we can click on the net notebook tab over here and that shows us uh, the results from this hunt. You know, and we can then do some cross processing on it. Now, in this particular case, we have one hit across the entire network. So we've got 2000 endpoints that we examined and one of them has a vulnerable Dell driver. And this is the location where it is. So immediately I can tell by scrolling to the right, the host name of the vulnerable driver, a uh, vulnerable system. Okay, so that's, that's pretty cool. Okay, yeah, uh, that's pretty cool, but you might, you might think, when you think about it a little bit, a vulnerable driver is an excellent opportunity for a hacker to get into the kernel. So they might actually bring a, the driver with them 
because it's signed, so they can insert it at any into any system, right? Because it's already signed. And then uh, once it's already loaded into any system, once it's vulnerable, then they can exploit it and get access to kernel level code and, uh, and get into ring zero. So one of the threats with vulnerable drivers is that, you know, uh, hackers can bring them along as part of a tool chain or, of attack. So what we would really want to know is whether that file is found anywhere else on the disk, not simply in that location that they are specified. Now, uh, those of you who have done forensic analysis of Windows systems might think of using the NTFS uh, file system analysis to get, to get this information. And as you know, the NTFS is consisting of a master file table, which is just a big table of records. So it's possible to simply scan all of these records to find out uh, information about files anywhere on that file system. And, uh, and you know, there are forensic tools that allow you to do that. But actually downloading the MFT from the endpoint uh, is, you know, could take some time because usually it's about, you know, 400 or more uh, megabytes, you know, big. And collecting that from 2,000 machines is simply not practical. But Velociraptor allows us to uh, forensically analyze that MFT on the endpoint itself. And really all we have to do to, uh, to, to get that uh, is simply create another hunt. So now we're going to search for um, dbutil on MFT. And we're going to select this artifact, which is the MFT parser. So this artifact allows us to parse the MFT and it has some parameters where we can limit or filter uh, those MFT records on the endpoint without having to transfer them uh, to the server at all. So uh, in this case, uh, all we really care about is whether the MFT file is named dbutil23.sys. So we simply add a filter to the file name, uh, dbutil23.sys, and uh, simply pass the entire MFT. Now, this artifact will simply pass the MFT on every endpoint. Let's, uh, let's have a look at the uh, endpoints being scheduled. We'll simply pass the MFT on uh, all the endpoints and look for that uh, particular file. Uh, and <clears throat> as, it, um, as it does that, uh, we will see if there are any hits uh, of that uh, file on the endpoints. Um, so let's, it's going to take a couple of minutes to actually pause, um, to pause that file. So we're going to wait um, a couple of, maybe a minute or two, and, uh, and we'll, we'll see uh, how long it takes. So whilst we're doing that, um, let's recap here. This is the NTFS MFT. Uh, file uh, artifact, and <clears throat> we're looking for the uh, dbutil2.sys file. Okay. Okay, and now once it's finished collecting this data, <clears throat> we can have a look at the notebook. And this time we can see that there are actually a couple of other locations where that file exists. So this is the location we found out from before, but we also see that file exists in the user's mic directory and in the Windows directory. Now over here, uh, we can see all the timestamps of when the file arrived there. So we can figure out whether the file was introduced at the later stage or it was, you know, at which time was it copied. So this allows us to uh, to simply hunt for the uh, the file for anywhere else. But how how do we know whether a file existed in the past? Is it possible that the file was introduced and then removed and then deleted later on? Um, well, there is another forensic artifact called the USN Journal, which tells us about what, every time the operating system interacts with a file. So USN Journal just keeps a record of all the files that were touched by the operating system, including when a file was created and deleted. So this allows us to even look back into the history of the system and figure out whether 
uh, a file was deleted. Again, the details of how you actually parse this particular artifact is not really necessary. You don't really need to know that. All we need to know is that there is this artifact called the USN journal, and we're going to do a USN search for DB utils. And all we need to do is select that artifact, search for the USN artifact. There it is. And then uh, we simply configure the parameters and simply search for uh, the <coughs> dbutil file, the same file that we did search for last time, dbutil23.sys. So let's uh, search for that. And, uh, and then we just, that just creates an, another hunt. And now all the systems are on our network will be searching their, um, uh, <clears throat> their USN uh, journal for any interactions with a file of this name. So we're just gonna wait until um, this, this will take a couple of minutes to, um, to work. Okay, so let's see whether we've received any hits. Okay, we'll have a look at this notebook. And we can see here the results of this hunt, which are very interesting. We can actually see the USN record, um, record the journal of this file in the desktop directory. It was created at a particular time. And then there's a lot of interactions with that file. And finally, it's actually deleted a little while later. So we've got another location of that dbutil.sys. And this interaction comes out through the USN journal, which is telling us, so we actually know that the file existed on the file system, was introduced at a particular time, and also was deleted at a particular time, which we can, could not find any other way. So this is an example of using forensic uh, analysis on the endpoint to augment our understanding of what happened. Um, finally, we can actually look for, um, <clears throat> for the hash. You don't have to uh, have the file name stay the same. If an attacker brought that file from externally, they might have renamed that file. In that case, we can simply look at uh, the file by the hash, try and detect it by the hash. And this is where Velociraptor really shines because what we're gonna do now is we're going to create a whole other uh, VQL artifact to try and find this information. So it's a custom artifact. Over here, I have a bit of a VQL query uh, that simply parses the MFT, looks for files of a specific size. This is the size of the driver, and then checks the hash of that file on the MFT. So this is not sensitive to the file name and it's gonna be able to detect it even if the file was renamed. So what we're gonna do is simply create another artifact. In Velociraptor, an artifact is just a YAML file that includes human descriptions and includes the VQL source code in that artifact. So all we have to do is essentially go to the artifact, the artifact manipulation screen where we can create a new artifact and simply look for uh, <clears throat> create a new a new artifact here. Okay, and then uh, we'll <clears throat> this is the custom artifact. So um, what we're going to do here, yeah. So this is a new artifact here. Uh, we have a name, custom artifact, and all we have to do is simply write the query in the UI. Once we write the query in the UI, that will become a new custom artifact that can be up, it can use, you can use that at just as much in the same context as all of the built-in artifacts to simply collect that VQL query across all the endpoints. So you can see this is the artifact where we're searching for a particular file size and a particular hash. So let's apply this artifact and create another hunt. So this is going to be search for dbutil by hash. OK, 
Okay. And we simply select the artifact with the VQL that we've just decided. We may configure the parameters, but these look pretty good because we've just created that artifact ourselves. And so we put in the correct defaults. Then we just kick it off and it gets scheduled again. Okay. And we'll just wait for it to complete. And we can see those results coming in. <clears throat> so let's have a look at our results. And we can see that um, suddenly we see there are more, more hits, which we haven't seen before. So this is exactly the same file, just renamed. But when we scroll this way, we can see the hash is in fact the same as all the other ones that we've already known about. So this particular file is simply a copy of that file under a different name with the same hash. Okay, so again, we just added a new custom artifact, hunted for it, and immediately found out all the files which had the same hash, but um, perhaps a different file name. Finally, we might want to know when the driver was loaded. And uh, in order to do that, we simply need to look at the event logs. Now, normally, the event log message would simply say, a service was installed in the system, and this is the file name. And you can see that we actually have no idea whether this particular file is, uh, is, is the correct file, is, is a suspicious file. We don't know. It simply says a driver was inserted into the system, but we don't have any context around it. This is where Velociraptor really shines because it allows us to collect this context um, from the system, which is enriching the event log message. So over here, I've got a query, and I'm just gonna show you very quickly. We are parsing the EVTX file. We are filtering by the correct event ID, and then we go ahead and, uh, and get the PE file information, which includes the imp uh, import table hash and the PDB symbols and all these other uh, identifying features from the driver as soon as it's being inserted. So uh, all we have to do is simply collect that, um, <clears throat> collect that, and, and it will tell us whether that file has been inserted, that driver has been inserted, um, you know, and, and trust the hashes around it. So at an, in a nutshell, um, we really only skimmed the surface here of what we can do with Velociraptor. Velociraptor has a lot more sources of data, event logs, ETW, WMI eventing, it has PowerShell integration, and we can do real-time endpoint monitoring, which we didn't even talk about here today, uh, where we can detect and identify uh, and identify whenever uh, something like that happens, like a driver is inserted in real time. Uh, we also can do remediation, so we can apply active remediation to remove the driver and ensure endpoints are clean in case the driver, the bad driver is inserted. So we haven't really touched the surface of all of these things that, uh, that we can do with Velociraptor. Uh, using this VQL, we can really develop some pretty imaginative detections. So to conclude, I've introduced in this talk uh, the new DFIR framework called Velociraptor. And, um, and maybe I gave you a little bit of a taste as to how you can use Velociraptor to uh, investigate deeper into uh, these advisories, not only just to look for the, um, the obvious things, but also to develop some pretty unique detections and flexible detections into um, <clears throat> and, and detect unknown threats. So the whole idea of this is to go from advisory to detection in minutes. You can see that I've just taken an advisory, written a VQL for it, and uh, collected the information within minutes, I was able to tell which of my machines were vulnerable. So if you, uh, if you were interested in Velociraptor and uh, think it's cool, I, I um, welcome you to have a look at our uh, open source uh, repository on GitHub, uh, where you can download Velociraptor, have a play uh, with it uh, and, uh, and learn more about it. We also have, uh, a Discord channel 
that you can jump on and have a chat with us and a mailing list that you can ask questions. Um, and um, <clears throat> so if you have any questions, please feel free to send us an uh, email or jump on Discord. Well, thanks very much.